It's like every single stress that I went through to get here is like very justified right now. Hello YouTube, my name is Grace. I am an actress and performing artist from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And um, I'm recording this from my parents' place in a suburb in Pataling Jaya, Malaysia. It is about 32 degrees outside, so as you can see, I am sweating. I want to tell you about a recent trip that I took to a place called Khao Yai in Thailand. So this is about two and a half hours northeast of Bangkok. And I had never heard about this place prior to visiting, but I was absolutely blown away by the peacefulness of it, how quiet it was and how absolutely gorgeous the views and the scenery was. And the weather is amazing as well. Prior to going there, I'd been living in a co-living space for about eight months. And even though I love everyone, I love the social interaction, but I was getting really, really burnt out. So when I got in my car and I was able to drive around and when I got, you know, like a room of my own, like that sense of relief was just <sighs> exactly what I needed. It didn't start out that way because I almost missed my flight because I went to the wrong terminal. I forgot that all Air Asia terminals leave out of Terminal 2 instead of Terminal 1. It was really stressful. I made a few navigational mistakes. Um, that cost me some extra money and all of that was just really bogging me down and I felt like I didn't like making mistakes. I know some of you can relate to this. If you're like middle class and you go traveling, there's always this sense of wanting to save as much money as possible and when you make a mistake that costs you money, even though it's just a little bit of money, the kind of money that you wouldn't mind spending when you're in your home country but when you make that mistake, you beat yourself up about it. And after a while, I decided, you know what, I am not going to care about those things because that is really not what traveling is about. I mean, being a smart traveler, yes, it's about learning how to pack your bag under 7 kg. Oh, there are so many tips and tricks to do all of that. Oh, you know, like put your passport in like a little bag so you can like get it as fast as possible and go to the checkout fast express lane, you know, the most convenient way to travel. But Travel has never ever been about that for me. It was all about experiencing new things, about being in the moment, um, about connecting with people from another culture, connecting with strangers and finding a connection with them that you would not expect. And that opens up a new part of your brain and seeing new views, tasting new foods, allowing your senses to be awakened. And that was what I got when I let go of all the things that I should be doing as a smart solo traveler and I let go of all of that and told myself, you know what, who cares if I make mistakes? Who cares if I spend a little bit of extra money? It's fine. That's when I just really let go into the holiday and I had honestly one of the most magical vacations that I have ever had for a very long time. And the best part is that it was solo. It was me and nature because I was there off season. So there was hardly anyone. The sense of expansion that you get from just being in isolation with nature, the feeling of freedom and breath that just pours into your body is was really priceless. Monday morning with hardly any sleep, I got on the MRT to Putrajaya, making use of this brilliant hack. 13 ringgit 80 cent from my co-live space near KLCC to KLIA and I boarded the KLIA Express from Putrajaya Station which is way cheaper than taking it from KL Central which would have cost me three times the amount. I made it! I can't believe I actually made it. I'm here in Bangkok and waiting to rent the car. So here are all the car rental uh, booths. Shout out to Thai YouTuber Chon for his very comprehensive guide on the Bangkok Suwarnapum Airport. I would have never found this airport food court otherwise. Such a good variety of cheap local hawker food. And then the moment I had been waiting for. Picking up my rental car. Woo! Can't believe I'm freaking doing this! <laughs> For the past few days, I was honestly quite nervous about driving in a foreign country. The rental deposit, insurance, license, road rules. But when the reality hit that I was now driving alone from Bangkok to a national park in Thailand and I had all the knowledge covered, that feeling of independence that comes from safety was just incredible. 
So I've now been on the road for about half an hour. It's so nice! And I pulled over at 7-Eleven. Oh, this is like, I'm feeling the vibes already. This place is insanely beautiful. <gasps> oh my god. It's so peaceful. The weather is like... The weather is so freaking perfect. Oh my god, look at the sun behind me. Oh my god. <laughs> It's like every single stress that I went through to get here is like very justified right now. Also, just a note that I made a navigational error actually that resulted in having to pay an extra 400 baht to head to my accommodation via the national park. Now, if you want to avoid this mistake, just bear in mind that you have to pay the entrance fee even if you are just driving through the park to get to another location. I'll link blog posts that share more info on this in my description. So I decided to just make full use of already paying the park fees and just hang out and enjoy the sunset, which was so worth it. I headed to the Kaoyai Visitor Center two minutes before closing and managed to bump into two other last-minute locals wanting to book the night safari. You have to book an entire vehicle and it costs 600 baht for the pickup truck and a ranger, which we got to split three ways. This national park is known for its interesting nocturnal wildlife such as wild elephant, sambar deer and rare birds and the experienced rangers are able to point them out with a specific technique using custom flashlights that do not hurt or startle the animals. The highlight of this safari was seeing this deer, which had an interesting red mark on her neck. Oh, what happened? What happened to her? Now, before you get confused like I did thinking, oh, poor animal, she's hurt. This is actually a feature unique to the sambar deer and it shows up in both males and females. It's still a mystery to scientists, but it's believed to be a gland that gives out a pheromone related to mating and marking territory. We also saw three wolves from very far away, but we could only make them out by the red glow of their eyes. Creepy, but very cool. I think I have arrived. The road to get here, very dark. But I am very happy that I'm finally here. Is this it? Oh my goodness, this room is so nice! After eight months of being in a small room of a co-living space, this was the privacy I needed. My own balcony. <sighs> Let's see what's inside here. There is even a tote bag in here that I can use to put my things when I go swimming or when I go to the spa. Hey, 
you have not lived life until you have slept on the bed at Hansar Thai Wellness. I had a really blissful sleep and woke up to a clear sunny day with a magnificent mountain view. The greenery here is just so soothing and the buildings are designed in a simple way that complements the natural environment. There's a fitness center, spa and one of two pools on the ground floor. All guests get a complimentary cooked breakfast with organic fruit juices and salads from the hotel's farm. And you get to enjoy it all amidst nature. And yes, that is a giant penis statue in a sheltered hut. The hotel also organizes wellness and yoga retreats, so there are a few spaces that cater to those. It was such a perfect day for a swim, and the main pool really is the hotel's best feature. Getting to swim whilst looking at mountains was just so perfect. Michelin food isn't just fancy restaurants. The Bib Gourmand Award is given to establishments with a simpler style of cooking and a reasonable price, but with the same amazing quality. Pen Lao started as a street stall and now it's a bright and airy canteen-style restaurant with cute decor and an outdoor seating area. I ordered the spicy catfish salad and the spicy mushroom soup. Food here is Northeastern Thai or Isan and is influenced by Laos and Khmer cuisine. The mushroom soup was absolutely heavenly and it was made from a Southeast Asian herb called Yanang leaves. And the catfish salad was incredible. However, the best thing here was actually the side dishes of raw green veggies and chilli sauces. They were so fresh, I usually don't like raw greens but I swear these tasted as good as potato chips. Then it was time to hit the road again for a very tourist destination. Ooh, it is a very hot day. Okay, we are now here to check out a very highly recommended place in Khao Yai called Primo Piazza. And um, alright, let's go! The entrance fee is 200 baht and you get to see some farm animals here. It's very popular amongst locals and families and is known as the Little Italy of Thailand. Once you're inside, you'll feel like you're in a little town in Europe with cobblestone streets and cute brick houses. It's very Instagrammable and you can go crazy with taking pictures as there are so many aesthetic spots. At the entrance, you'll receive a paper coupon and make sure you keep them because you can exchange it for some grass to feed the alpacas and sheep. Definitely my favourite part of the day. And don't worry, the animals are taken out of the enclosure to roam around every day, so they're all good and happy. The atmosphere here is very pleasant, making it a nice place to relax and enjoy cute farm vibes. Just stopping by. 
at the roadside because I just want to take a video for you all to see how freaking gorgeous it is to just drive here. It's just like rows, I mean kilometers and kilometers of all of this and you just drive and it's so freaking nice and it's so peaceful um, and it's just yeah kilometers and kilometers of this and look at this that's my Nissan Almera <laughs> here's the point where would have been my lost video footage but I'm gonna continue telling the story with the videos and photos that I do have left some highlights would be chilling by the pool under the full moon, buying very cheap, very good weed legally, and browsing the hotel's garden. The next day I decided was going to be my day for some hiking at the National Park. There are about eight trails here for beginners to advanced hikers. Khao Yai is Thailand's first national park, and along with other parks and the Dong Phaya Yen Mountains further north, are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The park plays a key role in national and global biodiversity, preserving diverse ecosystems as well as endangered species of wildlife. The most popular hike here is to the hills to Wat Waterfalls. I was there at the end of February, which is approaching the start of the March dry season, so the waterfall was just a trickle. But during the rainy season, the water can get pretty strong. Swimming, unfortunately, is not allowed throughout the park. Despite the trickle of water, I still found this place to be really magical. The shadows dancing on the trees, the light breeze, the reflection of the sun in the water bouncing on the rocks, and the fact that it was for the most part just me alone and this bird here made it feel like nature had given me this secret hiding place. The next hike I went on was about a 30-minute drive from the visitor centre and is where you can view the Hyo Narok Waterfall, also known as Hell's Waterfall. In 2019, six wild elephants drowned trying to save a baby elephant who fell into the waterfall. There are said to be about 300 wild elephants in the park, and many measures have been taken to prevent the incident from happening again. This tree right here is called a Somfong tree and um, it has gained so-called dominance in this forest because it has developed these thick roots which are called buttress roots oh, and it looks so gorgeous. Whoa, check out how curly this thing is! Yo! <laughs> Unfortunately, the waterfall is not falling. There are like trickles of water. Um, but it is the dry season after all, I guess. But I can imagine how beautiful it would have looked um, with the water. But nevertheless, it's good to know. Now I have an excuse to come back. <laughs> I'm going to test an echo. Hello. The hike back up the stairs was a real workout, but it felt great after and then I took a drive to the Fa Diao Tai viewpoint to catch sunset. This part of my trip really felt like a dream.
and then I went back to the lake to chill for the evening. So it's about seven, I think. And so a park ranger came just now to tell us, so there's me and another couple still here, to tell us to leave because we, there might be predators that come out right about now, including wild dogs and wolves, which bite people. <laughs> this wolf actually jumped across my car as I was leaving the park. At one point, it looked me dead in the eye, which gave me the creeps, and then I drove off. I stopped by at a random restaurant, which turned out to be another Michelin Bib Gourmand establishment called Hua Kampan. I had the roast duck red curry with rice and a Coke, and it really hit the spot. Finally, after about one and a half hours of driving, I'm here at my location. It is a very homey little lodge or like a little cabin with like glass windows. So it's kind of like this um, hexagonal shaped room. Now for some real talk. So the owner of the space, she gave me a call and she was just like, it's weird that you're here alone, just one person. For me, I'm thinking, yeah, it, it could be worrying. I mean, if I was renting my house out to someone, she could be a criminal or like hiding a dead body. <laughs> but. I don't know, the way she said it was... I felt judged for wanting to be alone. Would I like having a travel companion? The answer is yes. But ultimately, like alone time for me is just very delicious. But I'm just going to put it out there that I would definitely like to manifest a group of friends that I can travel with who sync with my timing. A lot of the times my timing just just plain and simple does not sync with other people and feel safe enough to be completely myself and to relax in the presence of someone else when I'm traveling. That was my real talk. I can't wait to have me some snacks, some herbal substances and uh, have a nice sleep. Yeah, it's so nice. This was a random spot that I found on Booking.com called Ban Suan Plendara, which translates to Garden House. It's in a region called Wang Nam Kiao, which is about a one hour, 20 minute drive from Khao Yai. Despite the lack of good pictures and reviews, there was just something telling me that I needed to come here. And I'm so glad I followed that intuition because this place is just paradise. So this is the fruit um, that he gave to me. He gave me four of the fruits. Um, I have no idea what they are called and he doesn't know either. It is so freaking delicious. I'm gonna eat it for you now. It looks like an egg. <laughs> Mm. 
is so good. It's very sweet, but a little bit sourish at the same time. It's like the combination of a mango, a star fruit, and um, an orange. <laughs> During my two days here, I got to experience for real what I always felt was my optimal working environment. A solitary quiet cabin in a farm amidst mountains. Having a car definitely added to it because it also provided the freedom in which if I was feeling lonely, I could always drive to the nearest town. My morning was spent journaling and having a quiet moment in nature. Then I headed out again to fill up on petrol and stopped by a temple with these magnificent dragon decorations. I could hear the wind chimes from downstairs which made it feel like there was this almost magnetic energy pulling people up to the top. In Buddhist teachings, the sound of wind chimes are both a blessing and warning for evil spirits. I drove to an onsen called Yunoyama which I found out from a road sign and what a hidden gem. It's a pretty new business and I managed to meet and chat with the owner. Since I was the only person there, it became like a private onsen. They have just built bungalow accommodations with their own private hot tubs. I'm definitely bringing friends and family next year, so do check out their website in my description if you're interested. After the onsen, I stopped at a cafe for lunch with more amazing views. I come home to this. Oh, uncle is so nice. All right, it is 8.30 right now and I am pretty much almost packed to go back to Bangkok tomorrow and then fly back to KL. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you with the views of the last place I stopped at before my drive back to Bangkok. It's a cafe with a flower field called Floriday and it is simply the ultimate Instagrammer's paradise. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to take that solo holiday if you're needing the peace and quiet. It is definitely worth it. I'll see you again on my next travels.